Hey everyone, it's Game Dev with Drew, and welcome to what's going to be the introduction slash how to do like uh, most things in Godot. So let's start off with um, a problem. My Godot is only 4.0, and Godot 4.0.2 is installed. So I'm going to show you guys how to install Godot. So first of all, I'm going to close this and unpin it from my taskbar and delete it from my directory. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click download lay latest, go into Godot engine 4.0.2, and it just downloads. Downloads almost instantly. It's like 50 megabytes. You then open it and then go to wherever folder you want to put it in. Some people put it on their desktops. Others like to put it into like nice, neat folders, which is what I do. And then I just put it on top of my uh, taskbar. So what I do now is I just put it down here. I'll put it right next to my A sprite. I think I, yeah, right here. Uh, and next, we just close this. And that's it. If you open up Godot, you can just click New Project. And it'll have everything else that you were working on. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make a new project. Before I get into that, I can also show you, uh, if you go to Steam, you can actually download Godot Engine here as well. It's free, obviously. Um, and I remember I used Godot for like maybe a day on Steam, uh, like a couple of years ago, and I didn't like it. But now I do love it. So I might end up using it on Steam, but, you know, who cares? I'm going to I'm gonna use it on uh just normal app anyways because i like to update it quicker because uh 4.0 wasn't on steam up until a couple uh, maybe a month ago when 4.0 came out so now that i'm ready for this let's just get into it um so i'm gonna make a new project and i'm gonna browse and put it where i normally do i will select this folder and i will call this game uh 4.0 uh tutorial and this is where I'm going to do all of my tutorials. You then click create folder and I'm going to make a forward plus because, you know, it has access to Vulkan. It doesn't really matter for 2D. I, like I could go all the way down to compatibility, but I'm just going to do forward plus because I don't care. So let's click create and edit. And this is just going to open up what is our Godot screen. It's going to be open up every single time you have a blank slate. It'll open up this screen. The problem is my view is uh, gray, and that's what I have it at. If you go into editor, editor settings, and then you just choose your theme, you can change your preset. I like gray. It looks nice to me. It looks nice and sleek, and I prefer it. So uh, I'm just going to keep it on gray. Next, we have everything that we have to show on Godot. The problem is we're in 3D mode. If you hold down right click and use WASD, you can move around in 3D mode, but we're not making a 3D game today. So over on the top left is our node hierarchy. And what it's asking us to do is create a root node for right now. And what our root node is, what we're gonna like, what I'm gonna explain to you what a root node is, it's sort of just like gonna be a level. So if I click 2D scene right here, this is like level one our main level, whatever you want to call it. So what I'm going to call it right now is main. And that's and this is like what we're going to test everything out inside of. So uh, our we have our scene. We have our main scene right here. And our main scene can hold anything inside of it. It can hold uh, players. It can hold enemies. Uh, it can hold uh, objects. It can hold anything inside of it. And it's just like its own thing. But we can also make like level one and it can also hold a player and it can also hold enemies and it'll be something completely different that your players see but this is going to be something that we test our characters out and what we're going to do in the bottom left we have our file system this is very important to keep your nodes and uh files and scenes and everything uh nice and organized what i like to do and you guys don't have to copy me is I like to make three folders, one called assets, one called uh, scenes, and the final one is called scripts. What I put inside of all these guys, so we have scenes, we have scripts, my handwriting is amazing by the way, and we have assets. 
So inside of here, inside of these three main uh, folders, we have subfolders. So scenes will have like levels, uh, player, and whatnot. And then in our assets, we'll also have levels. So everything has its own subsection. And also in scripts, we'll have levels and player and whatnot. But I need to explain to you what a scene is. So a scene is anything. If I click plus up here and I click other node, anything can be a scene. A character is a scene. It's not just like a play. Anything can be a scene and everything a scene can be inside of a scene. <laughs> this is a weird thing that I will get into later. So we have our file system all managed. Let's have our main screen. To move in our main screen, we hold down our middle mouse button and we can move around to pan. It's basically like any other like software if you've ever had to pan before. Up at the top is our toolbar. We have our mouse. I've never not been in select mode really. It's something that you use the entire time because you don't have to use these three guys. But if you do, we have our move tool, our move mode, is, and you can just like move nodes around. We have our rotate tool. It rotates nodes around. And our scale tool, it scales things to, uh, it scales things. But when I show you guys what, I'm, what I do instead, you guys will get my workflow instead. Next we have our like list of selectable nodes. If you have different nodes stacked on top of one another, you can just click some click it and then it'll show you like different things that you can select. Next is our objects rotation pivot. You can just change where something rotates upon its axis. Next we have the pan mode. It's the same thing as middle click. I don't use it. I never use it. But we have ruler mode, which is very important sometimes if you want to measure the pixels. It gives you the degrees, it gives you a hypotenuse, and uh, it gives you the sine and cosine lengths of the hypotenuse, which is amazing. Um, it's useful sometimes if you want to like measure like guys or like your tile set or whatnot. Next, we have our smart snap. It just snaps to a grid. It'll smart. It'll snap to this grid specifically. You can also change the snap of everything. So you can change it from like 8 pixels to 1 pixel or to 10 pixels. Like everything's typically 1 pixel anyways. Or Sometimes it's sub-pixel. You can just set it to be that. It doesn't really matter. Lock locks something in space. And this group selected nodes makes children not accessible really. Oh, it, I guess it says it right here. <laughs> Bones. You're never going to really have to worry about this. And then view is just like, it kind of just like you can show your rulers, you can show your helpers, you can show like the origin. I always keep all of this stuff on except for helpers because helpers doesn't really do anything for me. On the right is our inspector. So if we click a node, say we have main, it has everything inside of our inspector. So we have our transform which is a, like our position, our rotation, our scale, and our skew. Skew doesn't really do anything because nothing's visible right now, but it's cool. Visibility. There's tons of things that I, I, I'm going to go over when we do specific projects. So, But for today, I'm just going to show you how to do work around and the workflow of Godot. First of all, this is my first video in a couple months. I might be talking a bit too fast. Leave it in the comments if I'm going a little too fast. And... I will go slower, explain more things. And if you want me to be more methodical in my explanations, like use paint more or like, I can actually grab my drawing tablet and actually write out stuff um, to explain how things work. And I feel like that might be a little useful to show out like um, the math of everything and how things actually work. So uh, I'm gonna do a couple, a bit of that in this video, but we'll see um, how that works after I see you guys' comments. So let's actually get into making our main scene. Really what we need to do is we have main right here. We control S, we save main.tscn. TSCN just means scene. Um, and we save that inside of our scenes folder. And I'm actually gonna make a new subfolder inside of our scenes folder called levels. And in this levels, we're just gonna have our main scene. 
I don't know why it shorthands to lowercase when it stop when that happens, but I like to add the uppercase because it looks nicer in my opinion. So next, we need to make a player. And to make a player, really what we need to do is click this plus in the top in the top leftish, top middle, and we need to click other node. So this other node is something that was updated in Godot 4.0 from it used to be called kinematic body, but now it's called character body. Um, so now we have a character body, and our character body has nothing as a child of it. And if we see right now, I have a yellow triangle, and that really bothers me. And what it says right now is this node has no shape, so it can't collide or interact with other objects. This is important for our character because we want to actually interact with things. So to add a child of our node, we are going to press this plus in the top left and type in collision shape 2D. Now, there's another yellow triangle. And what does it say? A shape must be provided for the collision shape 2D to function. Please create a shape resource for it. And where all the resources are, they're in the top right in our inspector tab. So if we go down and see, oh, there's shape. Oh my goodness, it's empty. Let's make it not empty by pressing the word empty. And let's add a new rectangle shape. Typically, you either use a capsule shape or a rectangle shape. There's really no in between. You can also use uh, custom vectors uh, or custom points, uh, vertices for your uh, shapes. But we're not doing that today. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut and I'm going to grab a couple files um, so that I can actually uh, provide multiple things. So I'll be back in a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click assets quickly, open in file manager, and then add a new folder called player. We're going to double click player. And then in the description, I'm going to have a Google Drive to my night. So these uh, sprites were made by someone that I bought off of Humble Bundle. I just have tons of things and I'm allowed I'm pretty sure I'm allowed to distribute without making money and I don't make money from my YouTube videos so I'm just going to use this anyways so um with our night we are just going to uh just grab the uh night.png we're not going to add any of the sprite sheet yet I'm going to teach you guys how to use a sprite sheet in a further video so we're just going to add night.png and just toss them right here but we're going to see that, first of all, he's on top of our collision shape. We're going to put the collision shape down just because, you know, I like to have collision shape on top. And But here's the problem. He's still very, very blurry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Texture, Filter, and Set to Nearest. Wow, look at that. He's completely fixed. Next, I'm going to resize the collision shape to stay about his normal figure. Next, we uh, will rename him to player, control save, name him player.scene, go up, make a new folder called player. And the reason why I make a new folder called player is because we're gonna put some items inside of the player tab. So now I'll save this. And now if we go into main, and we drag our scene, one of our scenes folders called uh, in our player. So we have player in here and we press play. And then we need to configure a main scene and we click select current. It'll load up a bit. And then we have our player. So that's it for today. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video when I teach you guys how to make him move. Thank you, everyone.